I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of Saint Augustine. This is part 3. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This is a map of Saint Augustine in 1764. This is the comparison with Google Maps. At first, I thought that this area corresponds perfectly to this area on the old map. I thought the smaller structure on the left is the Alcazar Hotel, below it the Cordova, and the Ponce de Leon Hotel is the governor's house. But a closer look revealed that the scale I am using was incorrect. This was a good example of my own expectation clouding my judgment. The governor's house and the church on the old map still stand today, one block lower. The ancient lines. One block higher is the walled enclosure that once surrounded St. Augustine. There appears to be no trace of it today. The 1764 map was surprisingly accurate in scale. I thought I had debunked myself and closed this topic for some time. Later, following a hunch, I returned to it to re-inspect. I discovered something amazing. Notice the red colored wall. Each of the protrusions on the wall corresponds to the location of a significant ancient-looking structure. The pointed protrusion on the far right side corresponds to the place where the gigantic San Marco Hotel once stood. Today it's a collection of buildings of the St. Augustine Civic Center. The triangle to the left of it corresponds to the exact location of the allegedly flagler built Methodist Church. The next triangle corresponds to the back building of Flagler College. And the round protrusion on the far left corresponds to the front of Flagler College and the Leitner Museum. The wall ran along what is today known as Cordova Street. The street has the exactly same outline as the wall. The protrusions from the wall look large compared to the buildings inside the town. Considering how accurate the 1764 map was in scale, I will assume the structures in the wall were that big. From this, it follows that these strange ancient-looking buildings we see in St. Augustine may have been part of this wall, or some of its parts taken from the wall. It's hardly a coincidence that each protrusion has a corresponding red roof building standing at the same spot today. There are three more triangle protrusions. If we follow Cordova Street to the left, it's on the same line as the wall and has red roof buildings at the approximate locations of the protrusions. The first of the remaining triangles corresponds to the back building of the Leitner Museum, removed some distance from the former Alcazar Hotel. The second triangle appears to correspond to the next long building with a red roof, labeled Cordova Developments on Google Earth. The third and final triangle on the far left, at the top of St. Francis Street, is where today we find the beginning of a lake. It's the only place where there is no red roof structure. I'm happy about this discovery. If Flagler did in fact build these places, why would he put them on this ancient line? Why would he place them where star fort towers or lookout points used to be? Was he repurposing already existing building material? Did he believe in ancient energy lines? I looked for more information on when the walls were demolished, but came up empty. Did Flagler demolish them? Soon, I learned of many more large walls around St. Augustine, and also the names they had. The wall I had been researching was called the Rosario Line, apparently built in 1718. Then there was the Cubo Line from 1704 and the Hornwork Line from 1706. A bit further out the most line. The strange thing is, how deep I had to dig to find out these lines even existed. I found them over surveying maps of St. Augustine, not on mainstream websites about history. I found this reference on a historic webpage, titled, Old City Gates and Walls of St. Augustine. The last known time the walls were used in conflict was during the Second Seminole War, 1835-1842. So, the wall was there in approximately 1842, but gone 40 years later. Nobody seems to know where it disappeared to. And nobody seems to know why red roof buildings correspond with the protrusions of the Rosario Line. There is an encyclopedia page on the Cubo line. There, we learn two interesting things. In 1820, the newly appointed royal engineer, Ramon de la Cruz, proposed improvements to the Cubo line that were implemented by June 1821. 
most of wall has disappeared, short section reconstructed. How is it possible, that several large walls, even bigger than the star fort, just disappear? This is where we start treading on faked history territory. As with other places, there is an unusual information gap between the 1820s and 1880s. I put City Wall St. Augustine into a search engine, and not a single one of the first page results told about where the wall and its towers went. This is a 1740 drawing of St. Augustine by Thomas Silver. It apparently shows a battle that was waged against the town. The red roof towers are interesting. The most notable feature of this image is the pyramid on the upper left side. A close-up. I must have missed the part in history lessons where the Christian missionaries from Spain built pyramids. This one is similar in size to one that was found not far away in the Florida town of New Smyrna. The pyramids could point to older civilizations, perhaps linked to the Native Americans. Going hundreds of years further back, we find this map from 1586. I am not sure what this mysterious oversized tower in the hills is. Maybe it's the ancient light tower on Anastasia Island. Not far away from the tower, again what could be pyramids, or a pyramid. A high-res close-up, reveals several walled enclosures. There is an aerial view of St. Augustine from 1885, three years before the Flagler buildings are said to have been built. On this beautifully drawn image, we see the star fort on the right. We also see the huge Hotel San Marco across from it, although I am a little surprised that it's already operational, smoking chimney and all, considering it was supposed to have been built in the year the map was published. At first sight, I thought that this drawing debunks my notion of Ponce Hotel already being there prior to 1888. Where I thought it would be, I found only an empty lot. But I had misread the map once again. All the structures are roughly present in the correct place, even if they're not drawn with architectural precision. Let me first show you on Google Maps. Notice the place marked Cathedral Basilica of St. Augustine. The street it is on leads directly to Flagler College, the red roof structure at the top. Across the street from it, you see a smaller structure with the two towers. Now, consider the 1885 map. The building marked one is the Cathedral Basilica. The street leads straight to a larger complex of structures, 16, 33, 30. Across from it, to the left, we find a smaller structure that appears to have towers. The drawings are not very exact, but everything is where it should be. Even the fountain, is it exactly the place I found it when taking a walk there? This is my first piece of evidence that Flagler did not build the structures. They were already there. Either he unearthed them, purchased them, or simply stole them. Or, if there were already existing buildings there, he bulldozed them, and built something new, of course, all within a very short time. If you guys find this video interesting, I'll make a part 4.